Hey, I'm Dale Shanzi. I'm here with my son, Super Troy, again. Uh, paramotor pilots explaining all the detailed differences as to why all the best pilots are flying flat top paramotors and why it gives you the best safety, the best durability, the best reliability, and the best performance. So we're on page three. First one, fixed hang points for stability in flight, in turbulence. Uh, on the flat top, you have fixed solid hook in points. These hook in points cannot come together. As you notice, carabiners won't touch together. So they're fixed point, so you have a lot of stability in turbulence where if you have a unit that has soft hang points where the carabiners can literally touch together, in turbulence you can get spun up in the risers, which is a very, very bad thing. So also with fixed stable hang points, the, uh, it gives you a lot more physical control over the wing because when you input your body weight or weight shift, your body, that actually reacts into how the glider reacts. So another one would be fixed hang points help prevent riser twists during deflations. So if you did take a collapse and the glider tried to twist you around or spin around, the wide fixed hang points are gonna keep those risers from twisting. It'll have, offer a lot more resistance than units with much narrower bars that have floppy hook in points or narrow bars fixed are obviously gonna be a lot more likely to twist up in the risers. So most units like Scout and others and Air Conception, uh, even if they do have little tiny comfort bars, they're only 16 to 17 inches wide. Where on the flat top, they're 22 inches wide with that weight shift kit. So you have a lot more stability to prevent riser twists. And even if you got in one, it would have a lot more authority to untwist. Uh, like when you took that big whoop de doo but you didn't yeah. take a collapse. See, imagine if you would have spun up in your risers when your glider went whole whap in that thermal. That would have been really ugly. I would have like gone like spiraling down, like gone down the mountain. Yeah, and on. close to the mountain, like if yeah. you're ridge soaring, it could end very badly and you could get spun into the mountain. Okay, fixed hang points help resist torque, gyroscopic recession, and P factor. Okay, there's other units out there claiming to have torque resistance, but when you watch videos of them launching or in flight, you'll see them torqued off to the side. So they can claim whatever they want on their torque prevention, but if they're torqued to the side, it's obviously not working. So if you watch units like Fresh Breeze, Scout, Fly Products, Nirvana, watch them when they take off at full power, you'll notice the whole unit is torqued to the side because they really don't have a solid ability or understanding how to deal with torque. On the flat top, what do you do when you take off full throttle? You're gonna weight shift to the left because it goes to the right? Or That's is it correct. the other way around? That's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, you weight shift to the left to counter right torque. Oh, well, okay. if you're on the flat top 120 that torques left, then you would weight shift right. Yeah. But that is the correct way to deal with torque and when you have fixed solid hook in points, 22 inches wide, you have a lot of ability. Do you have any trouble uh, countering torque? No. Even on the super powerful paramotor that your dad flies? No, I just like scoot over to the right side. No, the left. Yeah. Yes, left. Scoot to the left yeah, scoot for right to the torque. Left. That's what I heard. And then you just gotta weight shift, throw the leg over, which is really nice. So it probably would be really hard to throw your leg over with this in. Yeah, you just don't have the weight shift ability. Yeah. It just wouldn't work. So you could contort your body, but if you don't have the solid fixed wide hang points, it's just not gonna react the way it does when you do have that. So even at 12, when you were 12, 13 years old, he has no problem flying the world record setting powerful flat top ninja uh, and eliminate all torque. Just watch videos of him launch and you can see the paramotor take off perfectly straight or even have him turn left against the torque all without the unit torquing him out of the way. Okay, motor mounts for interchangeable engines, mounting plates. This is another pretty big one. Uh, like the Fresh Breeze, the engine is mounted directly to the thin aluminum frame. So all the torque of that engine is trying to tear apart the frame and trying to break the frame. Where the flat top, the engines are all mounted with a mounting plate system so that the engine vibration is just fighting against a solid plate as opposed to trying to rip apart your aluminum frame. 
So the flat top frame's a lot stronger, but then that's added and set back even another point because of the plate system. Another big uh, benefit from having that flat top mounted uh, uh, engine mount is that the engine mounts on many engines are as little as six inches apart. So like if you look at the engine on a Scout, their motor mounts are only six inches apart. And if you have rubber motor mounts that close together, it allows the engine to flop up and down. And that's another reason why it's so easy if you just bump a Scout paramotor, the whole unit self-destructs because the engine flops down, the prop goes forward, and it'll chop the frame cage, just totally destroys the unit. Where the flat top, the engine is actually mounted to the plate, and then the plate is mounted to the frame. So your, your motor mounts are over twice as far apart, making the engine a lot more stable. Also, since with the fresh freeze, since it's, uh, only, it's just hooked into the frame, you're feeling that uh, vibration that whole time, and that vibration on the frame can cause it to crack. And we've had people calling in saying like their fresh freeze have cracked. That's correct. Okay. Yes, that's a big issue with those units. Um, and vibration, which yeah. you hit on, because the flat top then mounts to the plate, the plate has the motor mounts that then go to the motor mounts in the frame, you have a dual set of engine mounts, which cuts the vibration in half. So the pilot's feeling less than half the vibration. And then there's other factors to that, like if you notice with like a fresh breeze, most of the units, your back is touching up against the frame that the engine's mounted to. So that vibration is going directly into your back. With the flat top, if you notice, the harness doesn't even touch the frame. So in flight, your back is not touching the frame that would have some of that vibration. And that really eliminates a lot of vibration, which is a serious issue on units like the Air Conception. Uh, I've had a lot of people say it vibrates so badly, they literally have trouble focusing their eyes because of that vibration, because it's transmitted right through into you know, your body, which it just changes the whole sport because it's not as comfortable when you've got all that vibration. Plus you have the issue with that vibration, tearing the frame apart, causing issues. Also, if it's vibrating, it's harder for you to see, then it's harder for you to keep focus uh, controlling the glider. For sure. Because, whoa, <laughs> the Oops. wind knocks it over. Yeah. They're not as stable. See if you can set that up there. Uh, comfort bars hold harness open, which is another thing uh, to discuss. If you're mounting like the Blackhawk, which is a common one, or a lot of the others like that, it's the old Sky Cruiser design. It's a clone of the Sky Cruiser. Let's see if we can get that stable. Uh, if your carabiners hook to the harness, and you're hanging from the harness, then while you're hanging, the whole harness is squishing you in flight. But with the flat top having the comfort bars stick way out in front of you, the harness is held open by the comfort bars. So you have an open chassis. In flight, there is zero pressure on your body. So you don't have any pressure anywhere on your body in flight with the flat top design because of those comfort bars. Uh, easy to change. Hang points, which is another one. Uh, the hook in points are very easy to change with a flat top because you have holes and different mounting angles. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you'd mount here. If you're 160, 80 pounds here, 220 here, much heavier there. So it's very easy to adjust it. The, uh, with J bars, you can adjust it, but a lot of them they adjust by moving a harness, which are kind of a pain in the booty and you really have to play with a lot. You can also adjust the lumbar supports on the flat top, so you can do uh, little micro adjustments in the air to perfect that hook in point, which is important. Very simple intuitive cage assembly. The flat top, very simply, this side cage goes straight on from the side, so you don't have to try and dink around and match things up anywhere like a circle cage. With a round cage, you're trying to get pieces that don't go together when it's apart to try and fit together. So you have a lot of forcing to get the round into the right shape to bend things around to get pieces to go together. So almost all the units out there have a round cage where they're trying to get those pieces to fit together. And it's a lot trickier than having the simple flat top design where everything is square 
and fits exactly straight on, making it very simple to assemble. Uh, proven frame design, not new, just improved, perfected. Over the years, the flat top frame, we keep finding little things to improve and different ways to make it better and better and better and adjust the strength in different areas. So over the years, the flat top has really improved and had a lot of updates to fix and address any little possible issue where we could find a way to lower the failure rate. We always do that on the flat top. Very, very important. And then backwards compatible with previous designs. So anytime we change something with the harness or update something else, we try and make it easily backwards compatible. So if you have an older unit, it's really easy to take the new updated uh, things and put it back onto the older unit. So clear back many, many years ago, the harnesses are similar and you've got all these different pieces like the fuel system, which will attach to the new unit. Uh, a lot of units, like if they change the gas tank or something, all of a sudden the gas tank bracket is different and now that won't fit on their older year. So at the flat top, we try and keep things backwards compatible so all the different units are all you know kept in service as long as possible. Very important. The, uh, uh, like with the fresh breeze, a lot of the units, that's actually a pretty big issue because if they change the way the cage pieces to go together, all of a sudden you don't know what year cage piece you have to get for that specific type model unit of year. And all of a sudden they have to stock all these different pieces. And so companies end up discontinuing old units. And so you can't get parts for the older units, which is a pretty major issue. So you really, having the flat top keep things backwards compatible, make sure that even if you have a unit that's four, five, six, seven years old or whatever, that you can still get parts and be able to you know, keep flying and keep that unit uh, working perfectly. Improved comfort bar design for extra mobility and comfort. The, uh, a lot of units will have a single bar that comes forward just a single bar. Some of them will actually flop up and down, which is a terrible bad idea because you lose a lot of that, the stability of having a fixed solid chassis. But the comfort bars on the flat top cradle you all the way from your armpit to your hip. If you think about it, if you have a single bar that's coming out next to your rib cage and you smack into the side, that one single bar gets bashed into your ribs. So you see issues where people don't hit the ground that hard, but they literally break ribs and puncture lungs because their whole body weight is smashing down into a single little bar that goes next to their rib cage. Where the flat top, you have it go all the way from your armpit down to your hip. So if you do smack into the side, it's just like the seats in a Porsche. They wrap around your sides and cradle you inside that roll cage for maximum protection so that you have the biggest loaded surface area over as much of your body as possible, you know, so you're, you're preventing injuries. Makes a big difference. Also, the way the comfort bars and the flat top are designed, it makes it really easy to move around and turn around and spread your legs and do things so you have a lot more mobility because of the angles that the comfort bars are put at. Uh, let's see, improved comfort bar. Interchangeable comfort bars will fit both sides, left to right. The, that one, if you get the standard bars, they are the exact same bar, so they go left or right, where other versions, you have to get a specific side, um, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, paragliding hang points. This is a very, very important one. Uh, it's called certified height hook-in points. Some units, uh, or, or you'll hear people that don't really understand the sport talking about low, mid, and high hook-in points, and what's better, this and that. There's no such thing. There's certified height hook in points and there's uncertified height hook in points. So every certified paragliding harness has certified height hook in points, which means it is the exactly correct distance from the seat board to the carabiner, which is very, very important because if you raise those hook in points, all that work the glider companies did to make their gliders stall and spin resistant goes right out the window. So if you get a super safe beginner class certified glider and you put it on a unit like a Fresh Breeze that has hook in points clear above your head, all that safety goes right out the window. So if your hook in point is right here and that's what the glider's designed for, certified height hook in point, and you bury the brake, 
you're only pulling this much brake. But if you raise that hook and point up above your head, like on units like this, you pull that same amount of brake, you're pulling 18 inches more brake than the company designed for. So a super safe glider that would not have stalled on certified height hook end points could be whip stalled right out of the sky if you have a unit that does not have certified height hook end points. So this is very, very important. The other really nice factor is if you are a paraglider pilot or if you want to paraglide, you can take your glider straight from the flat top harness over to your paragliding harness with no adjustments because they're both exactly certified height hook end points. So it makes it really convenient to be able to switch back and forth between one and the other. Okay, comfort bars, cradle body for safety and optimal use of crumple zone. Uh, fixed hook end points, very important. If your comfort bars can flop up and down, look what happens to the harness. The harness just flops right into the ground. So there's nothing to prevent your body from hitting the ground. So it's very important that you don't have comfort bars that go up and down because the comfort bars go up and down, you have zero crumple zone. In order for the crumple zone to actually work, these bars have to be fixed so it holds this harness and seat in place. As you can see, in flight, you would be tilted slightly to the rear. And if you crashed in, you can see you've got 18 inches of crumple zone under your butt because all of that uh, aluminum tubing underneath your butt has to crush before your body actually comes into contact with the ground. The, which is, it makes a huge life and death difference. I've heard people talk about the, uh, oh, you don't need crumple zone under you because you're gonna hit going this way. Well, no, if you're flying, you're not crashing. <laughs> if you're falling out of the sky, it's because you're not flying. So if the glider is not flying, you are generally falling straight down. So 99% chance you're gonna hit in some sort of a butt down attitude. Doesn't matter how the glider's tangled, if you've got a certified glider, generally you will hit in some sort of a butt down attitude. And so if you have nothing under your butt, it really doesn't take much of an impact to break your back or die. And that's why you have so many people that have broken backs in the industry on those type of units, while it is extremely rare for anybody to get even injured and nobody's ever died on a flat top paramotor. Okay, so that is page three of the 304 reasons why the flat top is the only unit to buy.